Colonel just recently had a big update some three weeks ago. We now have the third version of the app, Colonel 3.0. In this video, we'll be looking at the new user interface, what it's like now creating new notebooks, as well as the different writing tools that we have in Colonel 3.0. Hey guys, it's Ropsy, back with Paperless X, a channel dedicated to easing your digital transformation. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications to join the family. If you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. To master the use of the apps that we cover on this channel, make sure you head over to our second YouTube channel, Paperless Humans, for both free and paid courses. You can also access them on our website via Patreon. And we even have them on Udemy, if you prefer that. We will have a link to all of that in the description down below. Color Note is a handwriting note-taking app that is available on the iPad, iPhone, and on M-Series Max. And for a one-time purchase of $12, you can get the app. You also have an option to try it for free before you purchase it, and this has become a new standard for most apps in this niche. This review is going to be focusing on the paid premium version of the app. At first glance, the user interface has been refined a little bit. You can still see that it's color note, and the app generally doesn't have the most beautiful user interface, but that also depends on the color that you choose for it, for your user interface. The dark gray looks better than the default blue. If you're using color note, what color did you choose for your user interface? Do tell. The organization on the home page has slightly changed, and this makes more sense. You can now see your notes, flashcards, and planners separately, which is great. Once you open a notebook, you immediately notice the new floating sidebar that looks mobile but is not. You can tuck it away if you want because it covers part of your page when zoomed in on your pages. The main toolbar has been limited to a small middle section on the top toolbar. It's probably meant to make it look minimalist, but scrolling through your different tools is not a minimalist approach to work. It is in fact more work. Smaller icons will take up less space and we wouldn't have to scroll, especially because now there are two toolbars. It's just easier to see all your tools on both toolbars. The developers seem to have thought that customizing our toolbars would help. In most cases, it does because you can hide the tools that you don't want to see. But if you're trying to avoid scrolling, you'll need just eight tools on the toolbar, which is not enough all the tools that are available for the toolbar, you can only pick eight if you don't want to scroll. A simple icon to reset our toolbar to the default setting would be nice. We look forward to having that. Can't help but wonder why they put some tools on the sidebar. It's just confusing because the sidebar is typically reserved for navigating your notebook and documents in the app. This is very confusing. For your notebooks, it's probably better to just type your notebook title. The handwriting version is a very interesting concept, but its OCR doesn't seem to work half the time. This was probably cool before Scribble, but Color Note does not support Scribble to keep this feature relevant. That wouldn't be a problem if they has worked, which it doesn't. The page templates in Color Note remain impressive in 2024 but we were hoping to have some page sizes by now. You can still use any page color you want. Only Colonaut can offer you so many page colors and you'll still struggle to find one that's useful. Colors that you use for your pen tool typically don't work for your pages. The cute page templates are not nearly as annoying as the ones in Killer Notes. In fact, after color notes, these are quite reasonable. Covers are decent in color note and you can design your own on this tiny window. 
didn't stop me from trying. And I just got curious to see what covers users have designed. Check out my artistic cover. Custom page templates are difficult to use in Colonote. You can't add them to your app's template library. You are stuck with importing digital notebooks if, like me, you prefer using those. It's always better if we can save our templates, but Colonote doesn't have that option. In fact, a lot of apps don't have that option. Since the app has a lot of planner templates, let's hope we'll get an option to save PDFs to these templates. Colonote has a lot of pins, too many of them in fact. This is the one app that will make you appreciate the fact that more isn't always a good thing. The ballpoint pen is great though. I'm not a huge fan of ballpoint pens, but this is one of the best you'll ever try in a handwriting note taking app. I love that it looks like a ballpoint, but it feels more pleasant than others that we've seen in other handwriting note taking apps. Strangely, I prefer the ballpoint to the fountain pen in color note. The two are very similar and differ only in that the fountain pen has the pressure sensitivity turned on permanently, but a fountain pen needs more than that. The developers have added a calligraphy pen, felt, and outline pen. You wouldn't miss them if they were not in the app. They look nothing like what they claim. You only appreciate the outline when it's really thick. The brush pen feels more like a faint pencil tool, and it also looks like it. Dashed and dotted pens are great to see. A lot of digital note takers love them. I find them particularly useful for drawing shapes. You then get 3D pens with different colors that pixelate. You can see the pixelation without even zooming in. That's how bad they are. I wish the developers could give us the ability to turn off some of these features that we don't want to see because Color Note has a lot of those. The star pen reminds me of the doodle pen in Killer Notes. Where in most apps you'll be trying to add custom colors, in Color Note, you're mostly going to try and delete some. I think that three colors on the toolbar is too few, but I will have that any day than what you have in Color Note because this color palette is really too much for me. Each time I'm in the app, I try to delete as many colors as I can so that next time I have fewer to deal with. Obviously, I need to be a bit more dedicated, or do they just keep coming back? Your pen tool has a thickness option that ranges from 1 to 10. The app doesn't specify if these are points, pixels, or centimeters. It's fairly easy to find the thickness that you want, though, so it's probably not necessary to specify that. The opacity option also doesn't have a good calibration, you just have the slider, but opacity for a pen tool is always great to have. When I first went paperless, I would have appreciated pen sounds, so I'm happy to see this in color note. You can also adjust the smoothness of your ink. This is the effect that makes your ballpoint pen in this app so good. But at its highest, it just makes it difficult to write. If you're using color note, how many of these many pens do you actually use for taking notes in the app? The pencil tool has the same color, size, and opacity options as your pen tool. You have a sketch pencil, which I'm not sure what to make of it. It just looks like a normal pencil with a big minimum width. The writing pencil is worse because it uses raster ink, so it's pixelating when you're writing. You definitely do not want to see this zoomed in. The last pencil combines the two to create a cute shape, so they named this the Winter Lace. I prefer it to the first two, but 
I also imagine it has limited practical uses. The thickness range of the highlighter tool is very good. I especially love that you can adjust the opacity for your writing tools because that comes in handy for the highlighter tool. It goes behind your ink, so layering it won't dim your notes, but once the highlighter goes behind your ink, you won't have to worry about layering it. It can either be freehand or straight with rounded or straight edges. The other type of highlighter in the app is a bit weird. It's trying to look like the one you have in Apple Notes, but missing the mark by a long shot. The handwriting experience in most handwriting or taking apps in 2024 is great. Color note is no exception to that. Palm rejection is perfect. The app zooms in directly on the page and it has a unique measurement for your zoom percentage. Doesn't use percentages. The range is quite decent. Some of your tools don't pixelate and those are the ones you want to be using when taking notes in case you want to zoom in on your notes later on. Who else was expecting a zoom tool for the app in Color Note 3.0? The pixel eraser is not very smooth, but you won't lose sleep over it. You can also erase per stroke. And your eraser tool is not selective for the highlighter, which is disappointing to see in 2024. A selective eraser has become a standard for these apps, so we're really expected to have that by now. You can scribble to erase, but it's still a hit and miss. Only Apple has mastered this feature. Auto deselect switches back to the tool you were using before the eraser. A great help. To avoid stressing yourself with the many colors and options for your pen and highlighter tools, you can save them as favorites. In Color Note, you can create a favorites toolbar for all the notebooks in the app and others for specific notebooks. Have any of you guys used this option? Because I also feel it's a bit overkill and can be confusing. And that is it for this quick overview. I really wish the developers could stop adding too much to the app. Most of the options that are filling up the app are not very useful and they don't really add value to the user experience. We could use fewer pens, colors, and even page templates and have the option to create custom ones that we actually would want to use and not be bombarded by so many options that are irrelevant. What do you guys think about Color Note 3.0 so far? Let me know.